I have been chasing this story for a few years now, and this is a murder, murder story. Here you see a glimpse of the Supreme Court appeal transcription for Richard Marshall. Richard uh, was accused of killing old man Baker, and um, then Richard himself was murdered. So it's a murder, murder story, and it's all over my website. And we went out trying to uh, figure out the locations of this story to bring it to life. And that's what this video is for. There is a book called Family Maps of Washington County, Missouri by Gregory A. Boyd. J.D. This says uh, copyright 2006 Boyd IT Inc. Uh, for this particular book and um, it is a wonderful book for looking at where the original land grants were um, and so we find some people in our uh, murder murder story in this book that helps us to go out on location and uh, figure out where exactly this incident uh, occurred and so I just did um, some photo shots and cut them out of just the particular pages of this book and here is the one important one is uh, David N. Baker. And so this is where uh, he lived and he got a land grant in 1856. He's in section 11 of Township 39 North, range 1 West. And then uh, there is here another... Uh, key individual in uh, our story. Um, I found a Thomas Bass. Now there are multiple uh, Bass stores, but this particular one, his father's name was Thomas Bass. And so Thomas Bass got a land grant here in Township 40 North, Range 1 East. Um, in section 31 in in 1857 and i put these two here sorry i'm moving around in photoshop so i put these two here um because uh, they're on separate pages but they're actually very close together and uh, that helped us to get an idea where Bass Store was most likely located because in our story we saw that Bass Store was um, very near where the Bass Home was. Uh, and it is likely that um, parents and children uh, lived near each other. And so this is our best guess. Of course, we're not sure, but we're just trying to bring some reality to this murder, murder story. And so, to better help you understand, I have this screenshot that shows our townships and our ranges of the subject area. And so, you see we have Township 39 North here but this line here separates 39 north from 40 north so this line here is 40 north now we have range 1 west 1 west here and range 1 east and 1 east here so that makes it uh really confusing because we actually have this uh horizontal and vertical line dividing our east and west and our two ranges um, but if you uh, have a little knowledge and put these things together it helps and so um, if you take a peek at this one again you have 49 north see it helps you understand a little bit better and 39 north down here 
And so um, right here in this corner is where bath store is probably going to be. And then you have right here uh, about uh, in this corner where uh, David and Baker would have lived. And if you zoom in, you're going to see this is State Highway 185. And so um, Potosi, if you keep going down this way, it's Potosi. And we'll look at some other maps. But we're um, surround, we're real close here to this Pea Ridge Conservation Area. And then I have another map that I've kind of made for you. Um, and we'll look at this a uh, little bit better. But uh, I have highlighted the areas of interest so you can kind of see how they all come together. So you see here is this uh, section 11. And right in here is where David N. Baker would live. And then you have this 31 up here again. So somewhere in here would be Bath Store. Now, um, we also travel to a cemetery where we think Richard Marshall was buried based on the uh, evidence that we have that um, uh, his son buried there. And um, we're going to look at all of this, but that's also in section uh 35 about right here. Now this town here is where Richard Marshall's son, uh, Richard Marshall's son, Richard Marshall Jr. Uh, lived, and we're going to take a look at his house as well. Um, of course, this would have been where he lived, um, you know, like 20 years later, because he was born um, about the time of our murder murder story. So he would have bought the house, um, you know, maybe uh, much later when he uh, was married, but it still brings together a uh, circular interest for our location and our understanding of where these families lived. And um, we're gonna look at how you can see here this line right here, where I'm pointing with my mouse, is Little Indian Creek. And uh, there's a railroad that goes through here. It turns right here and comes down this way. And uh, so this is Little Cor uh, Cordaway. It, it looks like Cordis, but it's Little Cordaway Creek. And so these two creeks meet right here, and you can imagine back in the day that these creeks would be important for their uh, existence uh, for a source of water, and so they would have also used them um, as a means for travel. And so uh, you can imagine that um, they traveled uh, along this area to get up here. This is also where uh, the North Cuts lived. And I'm not sure uh, how they would have gotten up here, but there is a road that goes this way. So um, we'll take a look at more. So just a quick help to help you understand how these section numberings work. And I have this map, and um, each one of them have uh, one through six. So look at this middle section here. This is a section, and you see the adjoining ones um, around the outer edge. So you have one through six this way, and then you have also one, two, three, four, five, six so you have six rows vertical and six rows horizontal in each one of these sections. And um, when they're numbered, they always start at the upper right, and they go one, two, three, four, five, six across, and then they go down to continue, and they go straight back the other way, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then they go down again, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, down again. So you see, it's not that they start here and go 1, 
two, three, four, five, and they go back to the beginning of the line like you're reading a book. They, they kind of uh, make this wave and go uh, back and forth. So you end up with section 31, which is in our uh, story with Bastor in the bottom left corner, right next to section one. And so section 36 is over here. So if you go up here to this corner, you'll see how we have section 31 really close to set uh, of one, t one uh, range and township really close to uh, the 11 in the other range and township. I found this interesting. We have here an 1855 Williams commercial map and it contains routes and railroads. And we can see here we, um, Potosi on this map and um, what is uh, which is really close to uh, our area, which our area of interest is, you know, about right in here. Um, so, uh, but what's interesting is here in 1855, before the Civil War, before the time period of our story, here is the way the railroad went. And it goes all the way from St. Louis, right next to Potosi, and down into uh, Iron County. And so this is why um, it makes it kind of evident to me why a lot of my family, uh, here's Caledonia, which is just north of Ironton, so, uh, but that's where why a lot of my family um, lived along this corridor. They were um, here in Washington County and St. Francis County um, and, and then Iron County and St. Louis. And also it's kind of interesting as part of our story. We know our story, um, the uh, court hearing, the initial one was here at the courthouse in Potosi and then Richard was taken for safekeeping uh, in, uh, to St. Louis and to the jail. And so you can see how easy it was for them to put the, him on a train to head to uh, St. Louis. Here is uh, Google Maps and I have here in this box is Washington County. And I just wanted to give a quick overview in Google Maps. Um, so you can get a sense of the location. Here is St. Louis, so the train would have gone up to St. Louis. Um, another point of interest is this old mines uh, where a lot of my family um, settled uh, back in the early days. So these two areas, Potosi and old mines, are kind of the center of uh, my <laughs> Missouri ancestry, as well as St. Louis. I do have um, some family, my grandpa born, being born in Deloge, and I also have some of my Rutledge family up here in St. Clair, and, and Richwoods as well, uh, not direct ancestors. One uh, uh, lived there with her son. But uh, you see how this corridor here kind of makes a shape, and then everybody, of course, uh, kind of eventually ended up in St. Louis. But uh, back to our murder, uh, murder story, if you zoom in, here is Highway 185 right here, and it goes through a P Ridge, and our story is... Um, out here, but I wanted you to see how close Washington County is, remember this line here, to Sullivan. So this is where Richard Marshall was murdered in Sullivan. And uh, so um, eight, 185 takes you right into uh, downtown Sullivan as well. And if we uh, zoom in, we are going to get a small sense of the area in Google Maps that we are dealing with. Now here is 185 and N. That's a great uh, 
starting point if you find that location because at this intersection is where we believe the uh, Rock Springs post office was. So everybody um, in this area would have said they lived in Rock Springs simply because it was the closest post office to them at that time. Here is a photo of the intersection of Highway 185 and N, and this is where they believe that the Rock Springs post office was located. And um, this area right here, this area right here up on the hill is where they believe the uh, post office was located. And here's another image of it. I just kind of stopped my vehicle and took a picture. And you can see this uh, raised area where they believe that the post office was located. And um, so that is uh, orients us. Because up here you see we have the little cord away. Uh, coat away, I think is the way it's said. Uh, like a coat that you would put on, coat away. And uh, so that's the little coat away. And so um, this kind of uh, orients our uh, area. But one of the best places actually to look at the location because it zooms in really well and you have the section numbers, um, is the Washington County assessment map. And uh, we have here, we're starting right here, you have the 11. So we know here that David N. Baker, which would be Young Baker, and we believe from based on the story and based on how it maybe it was passed down in the family, that Richard also lived right there on the Baker property. Um, so uh, we're not sure of that, but that's the way we uh, believe. And so that's just the way we're going to look at it to try to bring some reality to this story. And so you see right here is the 11, and up here is the 31 for Bass Store, and right here is the 35, which is another one of our locations. So you see um, and how uh, close in proximity all of this is. Now here is the 7 uh, that... Uh, Years later, um, Richard Jr. lived, and so we want to look at this, how uh, it, uh, in, in, in its perspective, back in the day when they didn't have the roads that we have to travel on, they had different roads, and so you can see the real proximity and location. Now, of course, I'm not sure when these railroad tracks went in. Uh, but that could have very well been back then. But we know that, of course, the two rivers and the railroad tracks follow the rivers were there. So let's zoom in first on 11 and get our perspective from uh, there. Here's the little 11. You can click on this uh, to see who owns it right now. Um, this tract here where the yellow uh, markers are. Now this I don't think is exact, but it's a really good uh, description. And so you see uh, down here is also 11. So 11 is currently divided um, in 2021. So you see we have 11 down here, but here is the 11 section where the orange is. And above it is section 2 and this is 185 that goes along here and so you have the Pacific Railroad passing through over or under um, 185 and uh, you also have the little Cordaway Corda Creek going right through here and so 
I'm going to zoom in a little bit to this section. Um, so here's the bridge. You can see this blue line. Is it realistic, like where the river exactly goes? Uh, but um, it gives you a close enough idea when you zoom in because obviously the uh, river is right here where it goes under the bridge. So this is an important little intersection. So if you want to go out on location like we did and look around, this is um, kind of where we started. And um, here is a gravel road right past the bridge. And we were sitting right here in our car. Now, we were um, headed, uh, we wanted to go to the cemetery. And so the cemetery can be uh, accessed from this road, but this owner, um, there is a gate right here, and this owner um, does not want you on his private property. So we were um, sitting there and Liz was telling me about it, showing me the location so I could begin get, to get a better understanding. Um, I forget what it was. She said something was right here, I think a school at one time. And they did uh, believe that somewhere down in this way at one time, uh, might be off this way. Not far from this road was a Northcut General Store, but that could have been, you know, 20 years later. We're not sure, but that I'm just throwing out that information for anybody who might be a Northcut because that was passed on to us. And so we were sitting here and we were looking at this road and there's a gate right here because this is the road that we had discovered takes us down to that section 11 where uh, David N. Baker, Young Baker, got his land grant. So that's where we believe uh, that they lived. So you can see the proximity uh, if you're following the creek, which they would have probably done back in the day, to go up to uh, where the cemetery is. But when we were sitting right here, a man pulled in. It was perfect timing. He pulled in over here, and uh, w otherwise we would have never been able to go down that road and show you what we are showing you now um, on what we filmed, and uh, we were super excited. I ran over there with my vehicle, and I caught him at the gate, and he was so gracious to allow us to follow him down his road. Here is a photo I took uh, another day, later in the day, um, of that intersection. You see it's late in the day with the sunset coming in and the clouds. I just thought it was really a beautiful scene. But um, right here to the left is that road down to uh, David and Baker, Young Baker's property. Here you see uh, the railroad line just... Um, the road kind of goes right over it, so that railroad line is not functioning anymore. And uh, here's the bridge, and right here is that other um, road that goes down near the cemetery. So you get a little bit more perspective of the location we're talking about. So we went down this road, and you remember we are in uh, section two above 11, and the land was in a, at 11, but we, of course, when we were driving down the road, uh, we did not know for sure how far down David and Baker's land was, and we were actually imagining this field maybe that um, Richard might have been living out in that field, but I do not think that's the case anymore. So you see here's the river. So this road is kind of coming together with the river. Uh, here's the river and here's the road. 
And then here's where we cross the river uh, while we were driving. We had to cross the river. So now the river's on this side of the road. And this is the road today, but this is the road that you see in, in our uh, video. And we just keep going down. And um, you see we're still in this section two. And you see we ended up here at this uh, gracious man's house. And you see it's right here on the section line his farm is. So we thought we were deep down into that section 11, but in reality we were not. <laughs> but that's why these maps are great and we ha I had investigated it before I went out but not quite good enough. So um, here is uh, when you're looking at the story. Here's where we are at and these two little buildings are the two buildings that were either the general store or a post office at one time and then you see in the video he says that the road didn't used to come in the way we came in it used to come in uh, around th this way over here and if I zoomed out you can kind of see how there's a little road here and it goes over that way so he says the road used to come in around this way and then cross the creek to go to this uh, the general store he had some people visit him that uh, were uh, familiar with the old house now here's the old house we looked at right here so you see it's barely in section 11 so this house here is barely in uh, section 11 so when we're looking at that house we can imagine that maybe that's where David N. Baker is uh, his house but if we uh, scroll on down we can kind of get a good look of maybe what section 11 looks like nowadays. You can see there's roads out in the middle, which would be just, you know, a farm implement <laughs> tractors driving through making uh, um, patterns in the road, not necessarily a road. And there's these trees, so we don't know. It could have been all forest back then, kind of like it is over here. Um, but uh, it gives us an idea of how far um, this uh, section goes. And it is following the creek here. And so we can keep going and kind of get a really good um, view of this section 11 and there's another road down here that I want to point out to you so we get down here and I think this would have been like near the end of David N's property and there are some buildings right here and another road and this road here to me we could also access if we could get this owner's permission the other end of n so anywhere in that field out there um, could have been homes scattered on uh, young baker's property and you can kind of get the idea of the distance the homes might have been scattered apart all along um, this uh, Codaway Creek. So here is the video of me driving down this road uh, down to the man's house and I'm going to speed this up a little bit. And I do apologize, but I had to take this through my windshield and it was quite dirty. So here we are getting ready to cross the Cordaway Creek. There's not much water in it at this time of year. It's, um, I think, August, October, October 
And here we are, you can see that field down to the right of us where there could have been houses. Um, and we're getting ready to be at the man's house. Wow, the old house. Oh, yes. wow. That's it. I don't know if that was David and Baker's or if that was built later. I know the Scots owned it, and that's where I said I used came back here with my grandmother to quilting these. And it was a really nice house. And so which one was the store? One was a yeah. store and one was what else? Post office. Post office. And yeah. and what post office do you think it would be? Would it be Rock Spring? North or Northcutt? I don't know, but this is what the Harmon lady told me. She said, okay. she said my dad was a postmaster. She said we had a grocery store over there. And she said we'd get up a daylight. Yeah, the one on the left looks more like a barn, but... And she said that one of her relatives, her, her niece or her aunt, would ride up this way on a horse, and she taught school way up... Way up there. Way up there yeah. somewhere. So the road came down... Near the barn, and went that way, and went around behind the house. Yeah, I was pretty young. And went over there all the time. Over that way. But I remember Willie. Where the store and the post office was. It's about two months to fix all the creek crossings, you know. Yeah. So I also did a video on the way back out, and I sped up the clip for you. So. Uh, this is uh, not realistic timing. So if we, let's zoom out a little bit and look at this road and where it goes. So you see this road here comes up back to 185. And if we zoom out a little bit more, so you have over here the end of that area where David and Baker may have lived. And we have this other road that goes up to uh, 185. And then you just go down 185 a little bit, and the other part of our story is then this Goose Creek Road. So if you're on 185, <clears throat> um, you can turn here on Goose Creek Road and follow it down. To where this railroad and Indian Creek are and um, right before you get to crossing Indian Creek here is this house and that is the house that was um, Richard Marshall Jr.'s house some years later. And so that gives you perspective of where his father, we believe, lived and how close he lived in later years. And also, once again, the Indian Creek and the little quarterway coming together along with the railroads coming together. Here we are on Highway 185, and to the right is uh, Goose Creek. And so you turn down there, and if you look back, that's what you see going back out. Um, going back down in, there's this uh, famous wagon wheel fence, which is super cool. 
And so when you go, get all the way down at the end, this here is the house that Richard Marshall Jr. lived in. And you can kind of see uh, what kind of road it looks like. It's almost a one-lane road. You have to really get over to uh, pass someone. And uh, so there's another picture of the house. You can see there was some sort of addition made on the back. I love the front porch. There we go, a little bit closer. And um, this I moved over so you could kind of see what the backyard is. And you see that the creek is directly there in the backyard. And uh, so um, that's another picture closer where you can see the creek. And this is turned around looking down the road. And there is the creek there where it dips in the road. Um, we walk down the road a little bit and to the left, there you see that railroad track that would have been there uh, back in the day. There's another road that follows beside the railroad track there. We did not go down it, could have, but you can see the railroad track is not even, uh, you know, used, it's overgrown. And uh, here we are then at the creek. Um, we you know, probably could have passed, uh, the water was low enough, but we chose not to. And this is looking up the creek to the left. And then this is looking to the right and you see the, the trestles for the, the train. But I tell you what, I could go sit out there and relax. That's my kind of place. I absolutely love it. So we're going to uh, now zoom out and um, we go back up Goose Creek Road to the highway and we see, it's, it's slow coming in, we see our uh, Section 11 here and here's the little Quarterway Creek. So over there is later years where Richard Marshall Jr. lived. So we come back over here to orient ourselves again to go back north. Here's 185. So we believe they lived um, somewhere in uh, this area. Here's the farm we visited. Um, here's another home we did not visit this whole field in here is probably where uh, the Bakers and um, Richard Marshall and his wife and children were living. So let's go back up to our first location where we had um, the uh, bridge crossing a little Cordway Creek on State Highway 185 and I said that you can get to the cemetery going down this road but we cannot get to it that way so I'm going to zoom out and give you a little a bit more of a perspective. So we have here Highway 185 that's uh, coming through right here where my mouse is going and it comes all the way up here and there's a little store up here and then there's what's called Briggs Road that comes down this way and drops down into this little valley. Now here is where the North Cuts lived. So you can see here is the Bakers down here and uh, this is that highway that we drive on today, um, that bridge right here, that road also comes up. Hopefully you, you can follow my mouse on into uh, the cemetery is actually located right here. So you can see how close it is, but we can't just go down this road right now to get to the cemetery um, because this landowner up here 
Um, you have to contact him in advance, but he will allow you access to the cemetery. And so you have to go all the way up to Briggs Road, and it is a very difficult road to go down. You're crossing the creek many times. Um, and uh, this is also on the map as, I think, 303. And Goose Creek Road down here is on the map as 302, count, County Road 302. Uh, but they also have their regular names. And so if you zoom in a little bit more, there's our bridge and the road we were not allowed to go down on. And it comes up all the way this way. And you can keep following this little uh, Codaway Creek. And you see here is uh, section 35 and right there following the little Codaway Creek is a New Hope Cemetery. So that is where uh, we believe Richard may be buried just because his, we believe his son and are buried there. And so um, if you come down Briggs Road to go with our uh, video, you see Briggs Road stops right here. And uh, so when we first filmed, I was filming out this way and uh, because we had just come in here. And then I stood next to their building here and I filmed out this way out the field. And uh, you see down, way down here is, new, is the cemetery. So um, I wanna pause right here because there is a road that goes this way and look at what we have here. We have 36 and um, over this way is section 31. About right in here is where we think Bass store was. Now they told us that because um, I was all ready to go down that road. Uh, you see, uh, this is where we were at and we could have followed this road and you see there's a creek in here um, to get to where we believe Bass store was. So the North Cuts we're told lived all down in this field and you see this is Indian Creek and uh, you, we're familiar with it now. So this map right here gives us a really good understanding of what the uh, location of Bass Store was to where uh, the North Cuts lived. So Bass Store being right over here, maybe down this road if that road was there back then. Um, see, I also see some roads cutting through here. And uh, the North Cuts all in here with the cemetery being right here. We are all the way down here, almost at the end of Briggs Road, heading to New Hope Cemetery, and that's where we came in. We had to cross the creek. And so there's a road right there that we're going to take. We had to get permission to come down in here. It's private property. Look at that gorgeous field we're going to be traveling down and we're going to be turning I think going up into those woods for a distance so we're down at the end of a field with this cool old house and there's the field at the end of a road and the cemetery is up this trail uphill we're getting ready to trek it. And we're going to New Hope Cemetery. And we, and as we begin up the hill, there's a gate. So we really don't have to go too far. It's 
So we're through the gate, and we think Barry here is... Richard Henry Marshall and his wife Martha. And so we think Richard um, Regis Marshall, Richard Marshall is also buried here, but we don't know. It's our best guess. The Browns, 1923 and 1942. That's when they died. Newer graves. Richard's grave could look something like this and we would never know. Or it could be just a stone like this. Lots of unmarked graves here. So many unmarked graves. Stones marking like a family plot, maybe. Lots of north cuts. That's where we came in. There's a miller and two north cuts. As we walk around, there's tons this, of unmarked graves. I mean, all of the blank spaces in here, we think, have people buried. Tons and tons. Through the trees, you can see all the hills. It's really a beautiful place to be buried. Go in inside a little bitty room in this building. It looks like just somebody's house. There's where the uh, stove was to keep it warm. So here's this building and in here, yeah, I see the church steps. Let me zoom in. They're right there and that's where the church was. So there are, is the gate to the cemetery, and right over here is the steps. So the church was right there to the cemetery. I have here a list of some distances that we've pulled out of that murder, murder story. And I'm going to try to kind of map them so that you could see our locations appear to be correct. And also to kind of uh, bring the story to life when we're seeing the uh, areas. So I have Richard and Smith Jackson met Young Baker near North Cuts. And North Cuts being one and a quarter mile from Bass Store but not between the ba Baker's and Bass store. And uh, Richard and Smith were going in the direction of the North Cuts, and when they met Young Baker, they turned around and went to Bass store. This is a screenshot, and in the very center of it is Bass store. And this is a radius as the crow flies from Bass store. It's one and a quarter 
mile. And so we have determined that the North Cuts are all living down here in this field with the cemetery down at the bottom. You can see it's perfectly right at one and a quarter from Bastor. I was like, yes. And you see the bakers are living down in here. So if they traveled from here to here to go to the bakers, the North Cuts would not have been between Bastor and the bakers. So they were over here, they met up with young Baker, and they turned around and went back to Bass Store. Next on our list, um, we have Richard borrowed a knife, uh, not 200 years, 200 yards, it's supposed to say, from Bass sto Store. So well, they weren't too far from the store. But here's the uh, key mileage. Uh, Three-fourths of a mile from Bass Store was the murder scene, and uh, then Richard chased Young Baker 50 to 80 yards, and he ran, tw and uh, Young Baker ran 20 to 30 minutes for one and a half miles from the murder scene to the Baker home. So if you add the three-quarter miles and the one and a half, you get that the old Baker home was two and a quarter miles from Bass store. Let's unpack that a little bit. So here is Bass store again in the middle. North cuts over here. So um, the murder scene was three quarters of a mile from Bass store. Around that circular area is three quarters of a mile from where we believe Bath Store to be. And so you see if they were coming and running this way, and there are, we did see there are some roads that go through here even nowadays. Um, so uh, it would be somewhere around in here where the murder scene happened. Of course, you see it's a lot like it used to be back then, even now, um, a very heavily forested area. And then you uh, put on the one and a half miles from the murder scene to Old Baker's house, where they kept running back and forth. This gives you an idea how much they ran. Um, two and a quarter miles total then from Bass Store to where Old Baker lives. And you see it's not quite down to 185. So, um, you know, down in this area we saw was where Young Baker lived. And um, we did see that... Um, Let's go back to this. Young Baker's house is a half mile from Old Baker's house. And I did uh, look at it. The distance from Young Baker's property from the long end to long end is a half mile. So when we were looking at that whole section where uh, Young Baker's property was, um, the top part of it to the bottom part of it was a half mile. So I've got something else to share with you here. So this here to here is a half mile because this whole square is, uh, this section is a square mile. So it's a mile this way and a mile this way. And you see from here to here, it takes up half of the section, so that is a half mile. So if um, Young Baker were living in this section down here where we saw that there was a house, half a mile from there is right here. And look whose section that is, Cirrus H. Baker. And that is David N. Baker's brother. That is one of uh, Old Baker's other children. And so this is actually that area that we drove through. When I saw that, um, I was super excited uh, to realize that that's probably where a lot of this happened. 
right there at that man's house. <laughs> and if we go back um, and look at uh, this again, you see it's almost to 185. Uh, right here is where uh, we drove down that section where Cirrus's would be, and a little further down from that was David and Baker's. So you can see the 2.25 miles as a crow flies <laughs> was pretty darn close to where Cirrus Baker's land was. It makes sense. <laughs> Right here is where the 2.25 miles goes. And so I wanted to also point out over here is this James Holsey. He's also in our story. So he's living uh, not too far away either. And I have uh, one more thing. Um, down here, we wondered where Simon O'Farrell lived because in our story, he learned one he, we learn that he is one and one eighth mile from the post office. Now you remember the post office is at N and 185, a lot further down from uh, this uh, location scene that we were uh, looking at. So uh, one eighth of a mile is 1.25 miles. So I did a radius for that. And this is uh, where uh, Simon O'Farrell had to have lived, somewhere along this uh, radius. And I'm going to guess that he's, since I think this is Indian Creek, maybe he's out in this area because I believe they followed that creek a lot. Could be, I think this is the Little Codaway Creek, could be maybe over in this area. I don't think he was this way, but who knows? He could have been anywhere about on that radius. Now, the importance of this is that um, uh, August 14th, three weeks prior uh, in our story, we learn that Richard was at Simon O'Farrell's house, but uh, also after the murder, Richard goes to Simon O'Farrell to um, try to get a warrant against Young Baker. And where does Young Baker go? He goes to Bass Store. So if you're looking at this, and um, this is 303, which is Goose Creek. And way up 85 is where the scene of our story is. So right here is where um, Richard Jr. lived uh, years later at the, whoops, probably about right here, at the end of Goose Creek. And much further up then is where the scene of our story is. And so we see that uh, Richard had a pretty long distance to go to get to Simon O'Farrell's. And at the same time, Young Baker is going from Old Baker's house, probably about right here, to Bass Store. And that is um, a little bit closer than where Richard had to go. And it was kind of like the race is on. But this does give you a whole uh, perspective of this story, and I'm excited about it.